Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Congresswoman Norma Torres's uh, Military Academy Ceremony and Informational Webinar. Um, I would first just like to kick it off um, with Judge Serna, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Judge Serna. Great, thank, great, thank you. If everyone would stand, place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. Well, good, good evening, everyone. It's truly an honor to be here tonight. Uh, I'm Judge Serna. I'm a West Point graduate, class of 1990. Uh, and I'm also a West Point parent. I have a daughter, Claire, who just commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army on May 23rd, and she'll graduate from West Point on Saturday, June 13th. So I'm very proud of her. Uh, and Yay. we also have, uh, thank you. And we also have uh, Nicholas, uh, who is a Cal class of 2020. So he's going into his junior year at West Point, uh, classmate with Nicholas Ramos, who you'll hear from later tonight. Uh, and we're proud of him. Um, but tonight we're here to really honor uh, the graduating seniors and the incoming class of 2024 uh, from our community. And I can tell you, um, there, there is no greater honor than to recognize the young men and women in our community um, who are truly leaders of character. And that's what our academies look for uh, when we look for um, young men and women who want to serve um, our community and our country. And, and for those we'll honor tonight, um, you guys have answered the call. And, and for me personally, um, there is no greater calling than the calling to serve your fellow citizen. And each of you have answered that call. Um, you know, as a military guy, I can tell you, um, there are no greater credentials in life than a college education coupled with military service. Um, it really will be the foundation for you to make a difference um, but it carries with it a great sense of obligation that you remain engaged and contributing members, not only of this community, uh, but of our state and our country. And so uh, we honor all of you tonight. Um, I have the distinct pleasure also of introducing uh, Congresswoman Norma Torres. Uh, and I've had the privilege of working on her Academy Selection Committee for the last several years. Um, and for those of you who have gone through the process, you know um, that this is a very important endeavor for her. Um, she's a military mom, um, and she uh, knows the sacrifices that you guys make. Um, and she's extremely proud of the people who we've sent from the 35th district um, to represent our community um, at really what are some of the finest academic institutions in our country. And I'll tell you, um, she is uh, she will hold each one of you accountable, <laughs> and she will check up on you and make sure that you're doing well. Um, but it's really um, incredible to have. Um, our representative um, really hands-on and, and truly caring about each one of our um, academy um, cadets and midshipmen. Um, and so um, without further ado, the Honorable Norma Torres. And ma'am, I think you're, you're muted still. Sure am. Thank you so much, uh, Judge Serna, for that introduction, and thanks to all of you for joining us. Uh, this afternoon, we have prepared a great panel um, for all of you students who are interested in joining an academy, a, academy to um, listen to. Um, I hope that uh, through this uh, U.S. Service Academy, students can attend um, one of our nation's most prestigious institutions in high learning, uh, tuition free, by the way, while serving our country. Um, these academies offer um, rigors and challenges that are found nowhere else. Uh, students earn more than their degree. Uh, they graduate with unique skills and, and competencies that prepare them for a very successful career in the military or civilian life. Presidents, generals, astronauts, judges, even NFL players have graduated from the service academies. And every year I receive applications from incredibly bright and diverse students across the Inland Empire. Uh, this year was no exception. And I am thrilled to have uh, to share that seven of our nominees will um, were accepted this year. 
four of our nominees will attend the Air Force Academy, and that's Ryan Torres of Chino, uh, no family relation there, Aaron Garcia of Pomona, Angelo Gannick from Fontana, Manuel Dusoldi Salas from Ontario. One will attend West Point, Isaiah Cruz Rodriguez from Ontario, and joining the Navy Academy is Jessica Felix from Ontario and Krista Lemoa from Ontario. We'll hear from each of them shortly. We also have representatives from each of the academies to talk about their unique programs and the resources each institution provides. They will go into greater detail about what is expected to be admitted to their institutions. I'll tell you a little bit about um, how our process uh, works at our office. After you submit your applications, my office will select a group of community leaders that goes through a rigorous uh, selection and interview process, after which I will nominate one student for each slot that they recommend. Attending um, any one of these institutions is an incredible honor, and it is one of my greatest uh, privileges as a public servant to put forth the best candidates that our community has to offer. So if you're interested in a career in the military, then my office is here to help you. Uh, we are so happy to help you through the application process. My office also has many other opportunities for students living in the 35th Congressional District um, that include the annual Congressional Art Competition, the Youth Advisory Committee, paid internship opportunities for college students, in my DC and Ontario offices. And if you're planning to go to college, we can also help you with your FAFSA application. So in closing, my office is here to help you, so don't hesitate to reach out. Visit our website at torres.house.gov or call 909-481-6474. Thank you, and I will turn this back to the experts that will be um, hopefully uh, giving you a very detailed, insightful as to what it is to be a cadet in one of our uh, military academies. Thanks again. So. Thank you, Congresswoman. And um, just to echo, I just really want to say how proud I am of these uh, incoming class. And um, we really do develop such a strong family within um, our cadets and how often we get to see each other. We try to hold a annual uh, luncheon uh, with the cadets and uh, try to swap stories, some gifts um, for white elephants. And I hope uh, after this pandemic is over, we get to do, uh, hold one again this year. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce um, a few of our former appointees and current cadets. Uh, brothers Nicholas and Alexander Ramos to share a few words for the incoming um, plebe uh, for uh, West Point. Nick and Alexander. You're mute. <laughs> if we, can, we can't hear you. Sorry, okay. Uh, there you go. I'm Nicholas. And yeah, I'm Alex. And we would first off like to congratulate Isaiah for being able to uh, be awarded or to, to have earned the, the appointment to West Point. We understand the hard work and dedication and the sacrifices you made to be able to make it to this point in the West Point process. Uh, we, we would like to say that the hard work is not done yet. Uh, we uh, we right now we know that it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a little different how you're gonna be entering the academy from the past years and it may seem like the people even there may not even know how they're exactly gonna be doing it but we know that they're gonna be take, taking care of you and just keep pushing through whatever it takes during uh, Beast is that it's just gonna seem a lot it's gonna seem stressful right now but we know that that people from this district have been able to do it look at us and other future uh, former graduates and. We're proud of you, man, and just welcome to the family. And we're always going to be at the academy here. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Isaiah, I know you had a few remarks that you wanted to share. Yes. Um, thank you first for the, the welcome. I really do appreciate it. I know that it is going to be different, but 
With things being difficult, I just wanted to thank the Congresswoman in Seoul especially because the application process is so hard and they made it just that much easier. And to have that aspect of the application process easier for me, it did help a lot, certainly. And I wanna look forward to seeing you guys on campus. Maybe I'll see you somewhere around. So I really do appreciate the kind words and I appreciate the opportunity entirely because I do have a military family. So just the opportunity to serve is something that's really important to me. And granting and you granting me this opportunity is something that I'll always hold true to my heart. So I just want to thank you for that. Thanks so much, Isaiah. We wish you all the best luck and know that you have a strong family here in the district and uh, certainly your number one cheerleader with the Congresswoman. And uh, when the time comes, I'll be the first to encourage her to get on a plane for a graduation. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And then if we could go to the next slide, Jacob, thank you. I'd like to welcome, again, former appointee and current cadet and incoming senior, uh, Jennifer Nieges from the Naval Academy. Hello, everyone. Um, specifically talking to Jessica and Krista. Congratulations for making it to the Naval Academy. I'm really excited to see you. You may see me this summer. Uh, I'm currently in Maryland right now. So all of us are over here helping, preparing for you to get here with this whole crazy Corona virus pandemic happening. So get excited. We're excited to have you here. And it's going to be a permanent family for you. For example, just one thing is that I'm over here in Maryland with people who just graduated and my friends who live in Maryland. So get excited. I'm excited for you. Congratulations. Jenny, you're all grown up. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to see you guys. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jennifer. I can't believe how time has flown by. And I know certainly um, it will be no exception with these incoming girls going to the Naval Academy. They are in great hands with your leadership and uh, experience. And so thank you for hopping on. And if I can uh, get Krista to uh, say a few remarks. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's start with Jessica. I'm not following my own slides, am I? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Jessica? I, I'm just on audio right now. The, the camera wouldn't really work out for me. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to the Congresswoman, um, not just for the support this year, but also last year when I was first applying. And you know the the year I spent in Newport at the the Naval Academy Prep School, it was it was truly amazing. I'm so excited for these next four in Annapolis. So thank you. Thanks so much, Jessica. And then if we can get Krista on the line. Hello. Um, Hi. I want to give an enormous thank you to the Congresswoman, Mrs. Torres for an opportunity of a lifetime, as well as Sol and Mr. Jones for always pushing me and keeping me in the right direction. <clears throat> um, of course, I want to take both of my parents, which are both here for me today, for being like the most supportive and for um, helping to push me along all the way. And the opportunity to attend the Naval Academy will be something that I will always cherish deeply. And I promise to honor th this district and uh, to be a hardworking student or a cadet in the academy, and as well as being a bright student in the education system as well. And I hope to be a leading woman over there, and um, I want to thank everybody for each of your support, and I hope to see you too, Jennifer. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs> thank you so much again. Ladies, I wish you all the best, and it goes the same for all of our branches. Feel free to always reach out to us and uh, like I said, hopefully we get to connect during uh, the end of the year for a nice holiday um, celebration. And so uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, Second Lieutenant uh, Brian McCormick. Um, unfortunately, our, our Air Force cadets could not be available at this time. So he was so gracious enough to join us, Congresswoman. He comes from Lancaster um, and I believe a recent grad, if I'm not mistaken. And so yes, thank you again for sharing some kind words to our largest um, incoming class with the Air Force this year. Thank you.
Well, for the incoming class for uh, United States Air Force, uh, good luck. Uh, you definitely earned it. You're going to be tested along the whole the whole way through all four years, and it's going to make you a better person and part of the community. And through there, you can choose anything. You can um, uh, commission inside the Air Force, or you could commission to the United States Space Force, which this year was the first class in the history of the Air Force having commissioned Space Force. <clears throat> Congratulations and good luck. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank you for having That's me. It. Thank you, Second Lieutenant. I appreciate those very kind words and um, someone who has had a little bit more experience than the uh, the other uh, incoming cadets that will be going in with him. I'd like to uh, welcome Ryan Torres, who completed his training at the prep school and will be moving forward into the academy. And, you know, I, I know you've worked so hard throughout the year. And so congratulations. And if there's any remarks you'd like to share. And hear you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, Congresswoman Torres for the and her entire staff for the opportunity to represent her again. Uh, I really appreciate it. Me and my family really appreciate it. And uh, I'm humbled and uh, I hope uh, to not let you down. So thank you. Thank you again. We're very proud of you, Ryan. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Um, can't believe how fast they grow up. <laughs> um, <laughs> next, I'd like to congratulate Angelo Gagnac. Um, He's from Fontana, and I know that we do not have video, um, but uh, we do have him audially. So if we can hear a few remarks from Angelo. You have to unmute, Angelo. Hello, hello. Yes, now we can hear you. There you go. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Congresswoman Torres for the nomination and giving me this amazing opportunity. I'd also like to thank uh, Ms. Soul for helping us keep up to date and helping us with all of our application needs and stuff. I'd also like to thank my uh, my family, my parents, my sister for supporting me throughout this whole process. And this opportunity means that I can get an amazing education, become an officer and serve my country, which is what I've always wanted to do. And uh, with these upcoming lessons and experiences, I hope that I can bring them back and help influence my community with what I've learned. Good luck, Angelo. Thank you. Thank you, Angelo. Uh, moving forward, I'd also like to congratulate Aaron Garcia from Ontario. Aaron, you are live. Hi, can, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Congresswoman Torres, uh, Ms. Soul, and the rest of their staff. Um, for this opportunity. Uh, a chance like this to attend a service academy has been a dream um, for a while and, and the chance is something that doesn't really come around often. So I'm glad that Congresswoman Torres and all of her staff are willing to help me out um, to <laughs> finish the application and get to the point where I am. I'm looking forward to spending the next four years at the academy and um, serving my community after that. So thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron. We look forward to stay uh, connected with you. Um, and last but not least, um, we have Manuel de Saldi Salas. I know he applied last year um, and he ended up enlisting into the Air Force and now um, has the great honor of moving forward into the Academy. So congratulations, Manuel. If you'd like to share hey, a few words. Yep, hey, can you guys hear me? 
Did you go to Um. Yes. Uh, I'm. I can't. I'm like. I don't know if you guys can see me or not, but my webcam is disabled. But I just wanted to thank all you guys for taking the time to uh, to talk to us. And uh, specifically, I just want to thank uh, Congressman Torres and Sol for helping me throughout this process. Uh, this is like literally a dream come true for me. When when I was in high school, the only college I applied to was Air Force Academy. Unfortunately, I got denied. So uh, this is a long time coming. So um, I just I'm just so grateful for this and. Um, what, what I hope to do is to hope to inspire other people to try to serve a country like I do. I know for I know for a fact I definitely opened the eyes to a lot of the people in my maintenance community uh, about trying to go go from enlisted to officer. So and um, I'm just most excited about really um, uh, developing my leadership skills and uh, making meaningful relationships with people over there. So thank you guys. You're welcome and come back next year and inspire some of the students um, at your local high school to join and apply for this program, okay? Yes, ma'am, I will. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, so that would conclude uh, recognizing our incoming class of 2024. So a round of applause to you all. We <laughs> hope that you stay connected again more than anything and you know, as things get hard, um, please reach out. You have such support system here. Um, it's, as mentioned, it's not gonna be easy, but um, we know that we can help you get through it um, in any way possible, so thank you. And um, I'd like to now turn it over to the portion of the information night um, and welcome uh, father of Nicholas and Alex Ramos, Lieutenant Manuel Ramos. Um, he'll be sharing a few remarks uh, regarding the admissions process to the United States Military Academy, also known as West Point. Lieutenant, you are live. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Congresswoman, thank you. you for allowing me to continue to be part of this very important process. Uh, uh, the Honorable Judge Salcern and I are the field force admissions officer for the um, the 35th Congressional District at West Point, and we uh, strongly support uh, the mission of the United States Military Academy, and that is to develop leaders of character for our military and our community. And we, as admissions officers, are here to assist you um, in preparing yourself for the admissions process, which is very, very arduous and complicated at times, but that is what we are here to assist you in, in successfully um, navigating the admissions process. I also want to um, congratulate all of the applicants and future cadets and midshipmen to all of the academies in your admissions to the academy. You are now the greatest ambassadors from the 35th Congressional District to the world. One day you will be in different parts of our country and of the world and to not forget where your military career started, which was here in the 35th Congressional District and bring your talents back here to our community to help make it better. Um, I will now turn it over to uh, Judge Serna, um, my partner in uh, the field force uh, for any words he may have. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you very much, Congresswoman, for helping me and allowing me to be a part of this process. Thank you, Lieutenant Ramos. Yeah, Lieutenant Ramos, thank you. You know, um, Lieutenant Ramos and I, we, we really are passionate about finding the best and brightest from the 35th District to attend West Point. Um, and we are really here to help you. So if we have any parents or students out there who, who think they might be interested in attending West Point, um, we are always available for you whenever you reach out to us. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a daunting process um, and you can't do it alone. Uh, and so we, we truly are here for you. And um, you know, th this district has a proud tradition of sending just incredible uh, young men and women uh, to our academies. Um, and that's what our academies demand, all of them, that we send the best and brightest our community has. Um, you, you know, just real quick about West Point, um, for those who might be thinking about it, um, you know, West Point has this whole candidate score that it looks at. And um, 
the 100% is made, 60% is your grades, 30% uh, are your extracurriculars and your sports, and 10% is the candidate fitness assessment test. Um, and so if you haven't looked at the candidate fitness assessment test, um, please look at it. It is challenging, even if you're a star varsity athlete. Um, that test will uh, devour you. Um, it really will. Um, but Lieutenant Ramos and I are here to help with that as well. Um, we, we train uh, several cadets every year, um, and it, it's several months in the process before you're ready to take that test. So, um, you know, you have to be a, a well-rounded candidate. Um, it's not just one dimensional. You have to have all of those, the grade, the, the participation in sports, the you know, the uh, engagement in your community um, and all those things uh, will help you to be the leader of character that our uh, academies demand that we, we send their way. So please reach out to us. And so if I might just real quick, I'm going to kind of jump off the rails a little bit, but um, Jessica Felix, I remember her interview two years ago. I am so fiercely proud of her. Um, just amazing that she, just the tenacity and the focus stick with it and and to reach your goal i am just so proud of her just made my evening so jessica if you're still on great job even though even though you're going to the naval academy we try to get you at west point um we're so fiercely proud of you so great 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 job just a wonderful young woman and our country is lucky to have you as a leader thank you so thank you <laughs> thank you so much um well, thank you so much to our West Point uh, admissions officers and um, for anyone who is interested in joining the following year, uh, certainly step it up because uh, they know exactly what to look for. And um, however, they are very encouraging every step of the way. Um, and so I'd like to introduce another wonderful person in our community who has been with our office from day one, Commander Martin Jones. Um, who is from Chafee High School and is the uh, Naval Academy Blue and Gold Admissions Officer for uh, the region. Welcome, Commander Jones. It's so great to see you. You're muted. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do this. One there more you thing. go. Am I okay now? Good afternoon. <laughs> First of all, everything that uh, Judge has said, the Lieutenant and uh, and everybody else that we've spoken and heard from uh, have the same line of thought. It is tough. It's designed that way because we're looking for people who can take the challenges we're hearing and living through right now and the technology that we're going to grow into and can work with it. It will be tough. And so we're looking for those who can do the job with compassion, with foresight, with common sense, with good judgment. And uh, it, so it will take quite a bit. I have a brief presentation. I'm sure most uh, may know some of this. Uh, Saul, should I? Uh, you've got it right here. So We'll just go through here. Obviously, a very nice slide here for you to look at, but I'm going to go through this thing very quickly and hopefully get done. As you can see, we're uh, the top number one public college, number four STEM, and so on and so forth. And this is available if you'd like this brief. Uh, Saul, thank you so much. Congresswoman Torres, deeply honored to be here with you and Saul and all of these wonderful students that are making the grade. Uh, I'll uh, leave this uh, presentation with Saul and she can pass it out. As you can see, we have a very, very diverse, diverse cult, uh, cultural heritage, both among all sailors and Marines, and that's what we need. We need to have a very strong cultural uh, and dynamic force, and this is exactly what the Naval Academy is looking for. Next. So on some of the things here, here's some of the uh, programs and majors that you can look at. Uh, we actually have some students right now who really want to be a doctor. And so there is actually place in there where they can focus on one of these degrees, but end up going to med medical school afterwards. So there's all these different opportunities. Next. <clears throat> this is a standard core curriculum. Most of you going into your first year are 4C. 
You're going to be under a great deal of pressure, especially during plebe summer. I know uh, Jenny Inigas has been through that. I know that uh, Jessica Felix, having just completed NAPS, she's been through much of this, but she'll go back through it again. And uh, they come out stronger and ready to tackle a lot more in the way of academics. Again, this is some of the things that you've got. Four years, it's quick, it's detailed, and uh, but it really works strongly in your behalf. Next. Right here, great ratio. I'm sure that West Point and the Air Force Academy have similar types of uh, arrangements where they really focus on teaching both during the lectures and the labs, tutoring and supporting extracurricular activities. So uh, eight to one, pretty good ratio, uh, pretty good. Next. Right here, you're gonna be up at 5.30 a.m. Some of you will get up well before that to do homework and you're gonna be up until 11 or 12 or whenever to get the homework done. In between that, you're moving, 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 having a little bit of food here and there and enjoying uh, both uh, intramural sports as well as other sports and community service. It's a great, great uh, opportunity for you. Next. Varsity sports, uh, we have a number of people that have uh, risen to the occasion and are doing extremely well now in professional sports. And uh, this is one of them. In addition to this, we have intramural sports, our next slide. And every every midshipman will be required to participate in one of these during the fall, the spring, or the summer. And uh, so they can join into some of those and they will be very busy. Next. Uh, full scholarship, just like West Point, just like the Air Force Academy. Midshipmen, you'll be getting uh, 1150 a month. That'll increase every year as you continue on. Uh, of course, tuition, room and board, medical and dental, great package. Next. Right here, your summer is going to be primarily uh, focused on either the plebe summer for first year students, enlisted experience, where you're going to figure out what are the enlisted folks doing. Then you're going to get involved career and then finally officer experience and exposure. And the whole idea during your last year is you're both training everybody and you're addition to that, you're also learning how they work on ship. Next. The goal of this is a BS degree uh, commissioned as a Marine Corps or a Navy uh, officer, minimum five-year commitment. Next. Here's the five. You can just go through these. I'm sure most of you may be aware of these. Surface, submarine. Next. Aviation, Spec Ops, and Marine Corps, okay? And next one kind of gives you an, a layout. Again, we'll be glad to shoot this to you if you need it. It's available both in Congresswoman Torres's and uh, Saul's office, uh, but this kind of gives you an idea of what we have in this area. Next. Here's the requirements. These are the same for West Point and for the Air Force Academy. 17 years of age, must not be past 23rd birthday. Uh, and on 1st of July, year of entry, citizen, uh, U.S. citizen by I-Day, unmarried, not pregnant, and have no legal obligation. Good moral character, which I'm positive every single one of these wonderful students has. Next. Here's what you're going to be looking to submit, and the application process is now open. Don't be, uh, don't be late. Personal statement, fitness assessment, activities, academic information, math, English, high school transcripts, college transcripts, your official SAT and ACT. Keep taking those SAT and ACT tests. Candidate fitness assessment, this was something uh, that uh, both judge and also uh, second lieutenant talked about. Uh, I know that uh, Colonel Bob Kay, who was with us, has also talked about that. This is very similar. All of them are similar, and these uh, need to be completed. Okay, next. All right. Um, there you go. And DOD, once you get about 50% done, they're going to schedule you for your exam. Next. And is that it? Next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you go back to that one? I apologize, uh, Saul. So nominations are required. Uh, 
Congresswoman Torres. Uh, she has been one of the most powerful congressional representatives I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And uh, I look forward to, to working with her for a long time. Uh, both senators in California, vice president and president. In some cases, when you go to uh, Naval Academy prep school, the Secretary of the Navy can give you a nomination. I believe Jessica Felix was able to receive that as well. Next. Right here, we're just about right in, uh, well, seniors who have graduated, they've either signed and they're heading out 29 June for plebe summer, or you're stepping into your senior year and you're just about ready to start. Admission board right now, you need to continue to apply if you're a junior. And uh, I would say the earlier, the better, okay? Next. So these are the steps and what happens, your preliminary application, they look at that and they make you an official candidate, give you a candidate number, and then you go about collecting all of the uh, items that they need and they're going to qualify you or not, both uh, from an academic, a physical and a medical, and then you need to obtain that nomination. Nominations are now's a good time to apply for that. Next. Okay, uh, prep school, I think we talked a little bit about this in Newport, a year long, and from there, about 98% go on to the Naval Academy. Next. Okay, so really encourage a strong foundation in math. There is no minimum GPA, but generally speaking, you're looking for the top 20% and probably about a 3.2 or higher. Take your SAT often, uh, AP honor, and well-rounded. Next. Okay, full scholarship, obviously guaranteed employment, location, leadership, and character development, and about an 89% graduation rate. I think I've only got a couple slides left, and uh, go ahead. This is just for social media. We can pass this on to you. Um, and woohoo, there you go. We're ready to go. And so uh, I am so excited about what we are looking forward to and uh, the young people that we've got going in. Thank you, Congresswoman Torres. I'm so honored to be here. And uh, I'm sure that Commander Bill Offer, he's our new area coordinator for Area 426, having relieved uh, Steve Andres. And you probably already know that. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to work with all of the field officers in your um, congressional district, ma'am. Thank you, Sol, for having me on. Thank you. It's good to see Bob Kay again, too. Thank you, Commander Jones. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, of course, um, with another uh, gentleman who has been so tremendous to me and to the Congresswoman to guide us into the process within uh, the military academies, I'd like to introduce uh, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Kay, representing the Air Force Academy. Thank you very much. So Appreciate the shout out, Marty. And Congresswoman, thank you for your support. Uh, the best staff decision I think you ever made was putting Saul in this program. What she has done oh, yeah. in five and a half years is absolutely phenomenal. And it I think really I think the proof is the seven young men and women from all walks of life. We've got an enlisted airman, we've got a preppy. Uh, also a huge shout out to Jenny. I cannot believe she's a senior. Golly. I remember when she's a very scared high school senior before our panel five years ago, and she pressed on to NAPS. Uh, actually, I don't think a lot of people know this. She turned down an appointment to the Air Force Academy because she wanted to be in the Navy, might have been the Marine Corps, and she's about to do that. So outstanding. Anyway, that is very emotional. But I want to do, uh, I just want to welcome, uh, thank you for, uh, for a tremendous opportunity. Marty, there's nothing more I can say. You said it all, buddy. And the, I think if there's one thing I can say to those of you that are considering, it is, and I think Commander Jones said it very well, and that is, what do you want to be when you grow up? And that's what he's really trying to tell you. Do you want to fly jets? What I want to do. And to me, the best place to do that was the Air Force Academy. And I got to do that for, for 30 years. Um, it, uh, it, is, it is a tremendous way to serve. Uh, as, the, as the judge, uh, Cerna has, his children all went to West Point. Mine were a lot more confused. Uh, I had one that went to Naval Academy. It's a two combat to infantry Marine. I have one that just got back from the Middle East in the, uh, Operation Inherent Resolve flying the F-15E. Uh, he, uh, 
he was out there for uh, for nine months uh, doing the mission. And then our youngest, he was really confused. And he went to West Point and he's an infantry officer at Fort Carson. So I'm tremendously proud of all three. They are all tremendous institutions. I mean, we all kid each other about, of course, the Air Force Academy is 7,258 foot far, far above West Point in Annapolis. However, they are all tremendous institutions. So my, my encouragement to all the young men and women that are watching is where do you want to serve your country? And you have the blessing of being in one of the most active and productive congressional districts in the country. And that is really these two ladies uh, product here with Congresswoman and Saul. So it is tough. Uh, my freshman summer at the Academy 46 years ago, that's kind of scary. To this day is the hardest year of my life. Pilot training was the most intense year. Flying fighters for 30 years was the most fun. But uh, that first summer and that first year were incredibly intense. So if there's, for those of you that are getting, that are going, even you preppies, uh, yeah, you think you know, but it's going to be pretty tough. And Midshipman and Negus is going to make sure that uh, the chief folks going to the Naval Academy really have your stuff together. So uh, we are all here. Those of us that have talked tonight, we're here to help you, to serve you, to give you any information we can. It truly is our honor and, and our pleasure to do so. So congratulations to uh, all of the appointees and for you young men and women that desire to do this. Please let us know if there's anything we can do to help. And with that, I will sign off. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Kay. Thank you so much again. Um, and for our final uh, academy, we have Errol Glenn, graduate of uh, the Merchant Marines. Errol, are you on? I'm here, so can you hear me okay? I can hear you great, thank you. Nice, uh, good evening, uh, Congresswoman Torres. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry I don't have video. I'm still at the office, so we don't. I don't have a, a live stream. But I, I do appreciate talking about the most important academy amongst the four. Um, I, I uh, yeah. So it, it, this this was back in you know 1997 when I graduated, um, and it was probably the most you know four to you know worst most difficult years of my life. As the you know, any of the academies, they challenge you uh, academically and physically. Um, and, but the unique thing about King's Point is you have an option to enter any one of the U.S. Armed Forces. So if you don't know at the age of 18 what Armed Force you want to go into, King's Point is definitely, I, I would highly recommend as being the best option. Uh, so, you know, upon graduation, you can go to the Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, um, and, you know, or also serve uh, as a civilian merchant mariner. So. Uh, the, the education is really focused on, you know, maritime engineering or transportation, uh, you know, services. Um, while I was at the academy, I, I sided with the Navy. I was going to go Navy nuke, and I went, uh, you know, I did a summer uh, internship, not an internship, but, you know, I served aboard the USS Scranton um, for, you know, I was going to go to uh, Navy nuke submarines. And after doing that submarine tour, I decided that, you know, that probably was not the, you know, the best route for me. And I opted to, to go in the U.S. Coast Guard upon graduation, which I served 12 years. Um, but, it, you know, the, the core curriculum is very similar to all the other academies, you know, heavy on mathematics and science. But you also, you know, you also get leadership and ethics training, um, literature and history, naval science. And an opportunity to do an internship program, which I did with Arco Marine in Long Beach, California, in the Naval Engineering Department. And uh, the other unique thing about King's Point is you'll do an incredible amount of traveling, uh, serving on board uh, vessels during your sophomore and junior years. You, you have to serve uh, 365 days to be able to sit for your U.S. Coast Guard license. And I was able to go from Japan to Hong Kong to Alaska, the Caribbean, and the Met, you know, serving on all different kinds of, of ships. And it's it's very unique. You're out there with a sea partner for you know this this you know span of about a year, and you're out there with a a, a, a you know a classmate of yours working alongside merchant mariners. Um, my route was engineering, so I learned like steam propulsion. Uh, diesel power plants, you know, 55,000 horsepower. It's just it was an incredible experience. So if anyone has questions, and a lot of people are not familiar with the Merchant Marine Academy, I'm, I'm always here to help and solve 
can hand out my information. Um, and if there's any questions, I'm yeah, I'm certainly here. So I hope that kind of rounds it out, following all those other presentations. But yeah. And the other unique thing too is all the other academies that are in remote locations, don't know why, but uh, Kings Point is about 20 miles uh, east of New York City. So you usually around senior year, senior year, you get a little more liberty and you know, going to New York City and, and kind of you know submersing yourself in that culture is something that's very special and unique. So anyways, I hope that helps. And again, you know, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here. Thanks, Errol. <laughs> Thank you so Thanks. much, Errol, for your annual support. It means a great deal to us all. Um, okay, Thanks. I think this, of course, this goes into my portion, which I cover um, for the Congresswoman, um, is the nomination process and what that looks like. As you know, it's a two-part application. Um, depending on how many uh, academies you wish to choose, uh, to apply for. So you would have to submit one application to your specific branch, if not all four, even five, um, if you are interested in going into the Coast Guard. However, for that, acad or for that academy, you do not need a congressional nomination. But if you choose to go to the four, which you've heard from our wonderful panelists, thank you to all for uh, serving our great nation. Um, we are certainly indebted to you for keeping us all safe and well. Um, you will have to apply to, again, each branch and also uh, to one of your respected elected officials or through your JROTC uh, programs. So I will be discussing the portion that falls within the Congresswoman's office. And so really quickly, I'd like to go over eligibility. So in order to be eligible, you must enter into the academy by being a citizen of the United States. Um, you are in good moral character unmarried with no dependents and at least 17 but uh, less than 23 years of age by July 1st of the first year you would enter and if I can go to the next slide thank you competitiveness okay so this is the part um, that I always try to push as much as I can early on as mentioned by previous speakers take your SATs, ACTs as many times as you can to bump up that uh, composite score to the left-hand side of your rows, you'll see um, for each branch what is considered below average um, to stay competitive, and then what is above. I can tell you right now, since this is my fourth, fifth year running the interviews, the average is no sh less than 1350. So I think these are very um, generous numbers to begin with, but internally with our office, we're looking at 1350, um, but more commonly 1400s and higher. Um, then um, also, however, I do want to encourage that even if you're not meeting that bracket, it's an overall picture that we're trying to look. Um, so if you are working at, um, you have a part-time job, and if you're, you know, the main um, uh, caretaker in your family for your little ones, if your parents are working, you know, we we take all of that into consideration. Um, for GPA, that's another heavily um, influenced. Um, portion for the academic uh, side of the uh, process. Um, just going from what I've seen in the previous years, um, the average low is 4.0, um, and then the average high is about 4.5. So um, certainly hit the books, start studying, start practicing um, as much as you can, and certainly surround yourself with people who are um, trying to meet those same goals as you are academically. And if I could get to the next slide, please. Awesome, thank you. Um, so just, you know, I know times are difficult with uh, the pandemic. However, I do wanna ensure that SATs and College Board is opening up their um, registration to take the tests. Um, they will be doing priorities for uh, those who are uh, seniors and you know weren't able to take those uh, tests and juniors. Um, and so if you go onto their website, you'll be able to see what the priorities are um, in, in testing and um, along are the ongoing 2020 SAT dates. Um, I do want to flag that while I did include the December 5th date, 
Um, the applications, which I will go further, the submission will be in November. So um, that would be great for someone who just needs to um, retouch again on, on their studies um, or save if it's a, a young adult who um, isn't a senior yet, but is looking to uh, prepare themselves for their senior applications. Next slide, please. And the same thing goes for the ACT dates. Um, just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that uh, it's fast approaching. And so uh, just be cognizant, be patient. Um, it's been one heck of a year. So we are all kind of just hanging on and helping each other out um, through, through this time. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. Okay, so in order for you get for you to get the um, application uh, to the um, for the congresswoman to to go through the process of the nomination, you're going to go to her website, which is torres.house.gov, and once you get there, this is what it would look like, more or less. Um, and you'd want to select the constituent service on the top right. Next slide. From there, you'll want to scroll down until you see our wonderful uh, previous and current uh, incoming class uh, faces there um, under U.S. Military Academy nominations. Click on that. Next slide. And then it'll take you to the uh, here to download application. It's a PDF. This year, I was able to um, convert it into a PDF fillable so you can just fill it in right then and there you could save it in just in case something were to happen I know it's 2020 it's about time I, I got on <laughs> with a fillable PDF so um, so from there we'll go um, down the list very quickly I know it's very hard to see um, it's currently not on the website but I hope to get it on um, early next week uh, just so that uh, you can start reviewing it but it is um, truly not much different than the year prior. Uh, so what you'll want to do is you want to, you know, go down the list of ensuring that we have your full legal name, exactly how it's written on your birth certificate, um, your parents parents' information, um, contact information in case I can't get a hold of you, um, your permanent address, how long you've lived there, um, also um, your email address, as it is the uh, one of the main ways that I communicate with you. Additionally, other you know uh, means of communication as your primary telephone and your parents' telephone number, date of birth, uh, gender, and any other languages that you speak um, currently. Um, there have been in years prior, which we've seen one of our West Pointers was accepted uh, solely on the basis that he was trilingual. So um, he's doing great. To, a shout out to Sebastian Hung. Um, who I think is home in Chino right now. Um, on to the next one. It'll go into the academics, right? Basic contact information, um, high school. I'm so sorry, Jacob, if we could go back to that slide. Thank you. Um, high school information, so your GPA, your graduation year, uh, your rank in class, um, if you've taken your SAT scores or not. And we will be asking for two letters of recommendation. One must be academic, and the other could be anyone else that would be a personal reference on your end. Um, we are asking that you rank the order if you choose to be applying to more than one branch of your preference. So if it's West Point, select one. If it's Air Force, select one. If it's any others, then you just go down the rank in order. Um, include... Um, you know, who your officer, who your admissions officer is, so that if there's any questions on my end, I know who to contact with, updates on your DOTMERB, right, your physical test and uh, your medical fitness test. We'll want to know if you've completed that. Uh, and I highly, highly encourage you to knock those out early on. They could be time consuming in the sense of finding someone who can run those tests for you um, before you meet with us because, uh, I've seen it multiple times where students have not been able to move forward because they could not take that test um, prior to the deadlines. Um, and then last but not least, just a friendly reminder and check off um, of, to, of all things that you'll be needing uh, to submit collectively as a packet. Um, if I, I will be asking this year that all uh, submissions be hand delivered just to ensure that we receive your application 
and additionally um, so that you get a letter of receipt that um, guarantees that your application will go through within our office. I do want to highlight that one thing that we've changed is that we will be asking a photocopy of a uh, driver's license or California um, driver or identification card just to ensure that uh, you are a resident of the uh, congressional district. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, wrapping up, I uh, just wanted to share a few of the resources that we normally put together. Um, we, you know, every year we have an in-person ceremony and in-person information night where we have a room full of 200 folks sitting in chairs, listening um, to these wonderful speakers, absorbing. Many parents are involved, right? It's it's a, a grueling process and you will more than likely need your family uh, to help you get through it, but nevertheless, um, it has to be your decision. Our judges are very good at spotting out if it's mom and dad who are pushing them along or if it's, um, if it's self wanted. So uh, nevertheless, for those who um, want to review and kind of gather a little bit more information on which branch they would prefer, feel free to use the links. I've also provided my email address and the um, website to the um, Congresswoman's webpage, and there's even apps. So, I mean, there's so many opportunities out there. And if I could go to the next slide. All right, and from here, that concludes my part. So I'd like to kick it off to the Congresswoman to close. Um, also, we have up here um, the names of, of cadets that she has uh, appointed to. Thank you so much, Sol, and uh, thanks uh, to our presenters uh, that joined us today. I want to um, once again encourage um, all of you who are um, interested in applying for one of these academies to please reach out to my office. So um, as you heard, she's wonderful at, at helping and, and walking you through all of these processes. Visit the website at torres.house.gov or call us at 481-6474. Thank you again for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sol, and thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of the, your evening. Thanks, Congresswoman Torres. Thank you, Sol. Great work Thank as you, all. Judge. Thank you, Judge.